I'm currently in the hold of a jumbo jet, somewhere I never thought I'd get to go. I'm now standing on the wing of a jumbo jet, somewhere even more unlikely I ever thought I'd go. You can just see the Lufthansa in front of the stair. Hello, thank you for joining me. I'm at Speyer Hofbahnhof. This is quite a small city in Germany. The reason we come here today is to visit the Technical Museum, which you may have seen my recent video. I went to the Technical Museum in Sintheim, which was only, what well, can I describe as a fantastic museum. Well, the Sintheim Technical Museum has a sister museum here in Speyer. Now it's that way. In true Henry's Adventures fashion, we're going this way to start with. Now the reason we're going up on this bridge isn't purely because I like the curly whirliness of the station footbridge and it's also a footbridge to another part of the town or city. It's because on my way in here I spotted something rather unusual. I was on the train and it looked like a Ludmilla. That's a East German Soviet design diesel loco in a very dark red so it's, it must be a preserved loco and they were at a siding probably about a quarter of a mile away from the station so what I thought we'd do is we'll go down there have a look at them we'll come back to the main railway station so we'll just come up this nice curly whirly I do enjoy footbridges that aren't your standard up down etc so we'll come back to the city once we've had a look at them and then we'll go and have a look at this technical museum. So the locos are about a quarter of a mile that way, so I'm gonna follow the bridge and go and find them. So I've just come along from the railway station through a nice leafy residential area. Now I'm just passing an old factory and uh, the purpose of this detour is becoming clear right ahead of us, have a look. Up ahead there in the siding by the railway line is the unmistakable sight of a Ludmilla. So as I was on the train, I was sat on the other side and it just, there's a Ludmilla on that side, I've got to go and have a look at that. They appear to be just sat there. I can't hear the sound of any diesel loco or any engines turning. There's actually, there's two Ludmillas and a small diesel loco and possibly an electric at the other end, but we'll have a closer look as we get there. So this is a really exciting um, surprise. I was not expecting to see this here. I have seen Ludmillas in Germany in the past and other countries have seen them in Hungary but the usually you see them in Germany it was usually in the former East Germany I remember when I first went to the Hartz quite often seeing them on freight trains but I'm pretty sure these ones are all preserved locos so it'd be a bit like in the UK if you suddenly came across a couple of class 50s a class 14 teddy bear and I don't know something like a class 81 or 82 or 86 you know so there's this little miller here, that's number 233373. So that's one little miller I shall be searching through my notebook or through my um, spotter's book to tick off. And we've got this class 260, a little diesel shunter, 26872. And then another little miller. And which one is that? 233271. So that's the second little miller. And then yeah, it's an electric loco. Class 151. I think I remember seeing these on passenger trains at Frankfurt a few years ago. There's a few of them around, so it's quite, yeah, quite an exciting surprise. Not expected at all. That's what you do tend to get more random things just turning up on German railways than you do probably anywhere else. You occasionally, like I've been in Britain, and you know, sometimes you do see convoys of preserved locos heading around, perhaps from a diesel gala off from one railway to another. As soon as I can get across the road, we'll go and have a closer look. And then I'm going to head back in that direction to go to the Technical Museum, the reason we actually came to Sprayer today in the first place. So there we go, look at that. Yeah, I'm really happy to have seen it. Like I said, it's just pure surprise, this was. So I'm going to head back past them again now. We're going to go and find Technical Museum. Well, it was exciting to see those preserved locos. Now we've come to something else interesting, but of a different age. It's not a disused railway line. I think this is the old city wall. 
we're just on the edge of the city. Now I hadn't planned to do a city tour and admittedly I've done no research on the history of Speyer but I'm getting the impression it's a very interesting city. My plan was to walk past the cathedral and have a look at that but yeah here we have looks like an old railway I know it's not it's it's got to be the old city walls because the railway line is just behind those buildings some really nice architecture not so much that but look, look at that one really nice building so in fact I have a feeling if I just keep going on oh, there's a set church up there in the fog hidden in the fog it's quite a foggy morning but I'll tell you what I thought was really funny was this morning I came on the train as the train departed Mannheim it went over the River Rhine and it was very foggy you may have heard of Newcastle's infamous fog on the Tyne well today I saw the fog on the Rhine anyway let's uh, keep going I think so if I take a left here it will take us into the heart of the old city so let's go and walk through the old city of Spain so here we are, we are now just about to walk into the historic city centre, look at that, there's one of the gates, it's a beautiful building, look at this, really, really nice building, so we're going to walk through here, walk up the main street, in fact I can just see through the, through the arch, the cathedral head, excuse me, um, sorry, just looking around because I wasn't entirely sure which bits were pedestrianised and which bits were roadways I did not want to get run over, and yeah, look at this, beautiful clock up there too. So we're going to walk through here and um, if you look ahead I can already see the cathedral but the fog is doing a rather good job of hiding the top of the towers it's like the towers just disappear into the sky anyway it's now officially coming to the old city centre we'll have a look see what the tower looks like from the other side oh interesting wow completely different that's uh yeah it's very very nice uh German city centre this is. There's a, a Chibo shop there. I remember when we used to get them in the UK but you don't anymore and um, when I was a teenager I always used to go in them and get the sweets and never actually buy anything. Anyway let's go and have a look at the cathedral. So here we are we're right down the other end of the main street in Speyer city centre. Interestingly in the pavings I've noticed these there's one on each side it's almost like they're showing there was once a tramway here. I expect there probably was, because just about every city in Germany, even most towns, have had trams at some point, but they haven't got any trams now. And there, that is Speyer Cathedral. So I'm going to go and take a closer look, and then round the corner and across the road is the museum, which we've come here to see. I don't want to talk too much in here, but here we are. This is inside the beautiful. We're back outside now and the bells are ringing because it's 12 o'clock. There's the cathedral, so it's a rather large and impressive building. There's a nice model of it here, so give you an idea of what it actually looks like. So, I'm now going to go in that direction through there and we're going to find this museum. So, we're almost there now. It was quite a long walk from the railway station, pretty about a mile. But then, as I said, I did want to have a look at the city on the way. Ooh. And here, in front of us, when this lorry gets out of the way, it's going to reveal the museum. So it says museum, you can see an aeroplane pointing upwards. I can see some locomotives over there. I can see aeroplanes. Let's get across the road and we're going to go and have a look inside. Well, this is interesting. I've literally just come across the road and I found a railway line. The railway line goes along there. As I said, I could see some locomotives. Behind there are some locomotives there's no point really trying to look at them now through the fence because once we've paid to go in the museum we'll obviously be able to have a look at that oh look at that there's a, a jumbo jet up there doesn't look so impressive on camera but i think it will when we get closer so when we went to the one at sin time it's kind of big aviation thing was that you could go in the concord and the tu 144 which was you know quite exciting well very exciting the only place in the world where they were the two were displayed together well here there's various aeroplanes and obviously locomotives i think is that a boat over there i can just see what looks like a boat over there so lots of interesting things to see this looks to me like turbines you get in a power station let's see if we can find out because they're huge look at that so i'm um, let's check it is what i think it is is it in english yeah definitely it's all in german definitely says turbines oh fipsburg 
block. I think this turbine from a, possibly a nuclear power station. Not too sure, but anyway, the point is, it's these huge turbines which make the electricity at power stations. I did do a video um, on a power station, completely different type, a hydroelectric power station in Scotland. If you want to see that, have a look at the screen now. There's some more aeroplanes. I'm not too clued up on aviation. As I said in the other video, I like aeroplanes. I'm not an aviation enthusiast. But you know, you can't, no one can really fail to be, to be impressed by them. I just noticed the steamroller up here. We might be able to see this when we get inside, but just in case we can't, I'm gonna have a look at this one now, because it's just there in front of us. I think we will see it inside. So I think there's another roller over there. There's so much, there's an Antonov. Anyway, that's the type of airplane that I do know about, a very, very big airplane. I think what I need to do is go inside and let's go and explore this very exciting looking museum. So here we are inside, I have got my ticket. That noise you can hear is a robot mopping the floor. So I'm gonna go and find my way in. Just a couple of things, there's another nice model there of the cathedral and another unexpected surprise. They gave you a can of Red Bull free, part of your ticket for coming in. So it's a bit random, but you know, I'm quite happy with that. So I've got to find a way in. What on earth is that? That's, uh, that is one very funny car. Look, covered in all sorts of things. It is a car, yeah, underneath all that. So, look at that. Right, let's, um, I didn't do this on camera in the other one, but I'll show you the, so you get to these ticket barriers, not quite like you get on British railway stations, but I think what I do is I, I scan this here and it looks me through, yeah, it's gone green, I go through the turnstile, and here we are, I've not seen this at all for the first time, in front of us we have a steam loco, and once again we're in a big hall, this is a much older building this time, so we have a class 42, and um, let's have a look, we'll have a, as soon as I'm here now, showing it to you as I see it, we'll just have a walk through. There's a, one of the very old German steam locomotives up there. There's locos on both sides. I can see another semi-streamlined loco over there. What I'll do, I'll just walk down here and then I'll have a look round and then I'll point out some of my favourite things. But as soon as I'm seeing this all for the first time, oh look, there's a Trabant. Always makes my day when I see a Trabant. I used to own one. Great car, great fun. Maybe not the most practical it was great fun to own. There's another steam loco over there, a class 50. As I said, at Sinsheim, not to be confused with the British diesel locomotive, but it's a, a German class 50. And there's a red arrow. I'm gonna now explore. Once I've had a good exploration, I'll show you some of my favorite exhibits. So here we are by the Trabant. It always makes my day, as I said, seeing them. I know I said that in this video about 10 seconds ago, but in real life it was about three hours ago. I've now been exploring the museum for the last three hours. I'm now gonna give you a bit of a whistle stop tour, show you some of my favorite exhibits. Now there's so many exhibits, literally hundreds. I cannot possibly point all of them out, but I'm just gonna show you a few of my favorite. So um, I'm just gonna start off with something British here. Look, a John Fowler showman's engine, sort of thing you'll see if you go to steam rails in the UK. So it's nice to see that here. So pan around the room, you can see there is a lot of different forms of transport it seems that the running joke seems to be with here and the one at Sinsheim it has every form of transport but a tram up there is a very old looking steam loco it's actually a replica of Alder one of the first steam locos it ran between Nuremberg and Fuff um, one of the first sort of mainline steam locos of Germany as I mentioned as we came in there is a class 42 so that is that's a 210 a bit like this one here, class 50, which, as I said, not the British class 50, something very different. I did once, um, I took a picture of a German class 50 and I posted it in the British class 50 Facebook group just to wind them up. It was quite funny seeing the reactions I got. Anyway, so this is a class 50. And we're gonna go and have a look on the footplate because it's always quite exciting to do. Okay, it's not in steam, but you know, you can appreciate the sheer size of it. It's an impressive logo. Imagine I'm sat here driving it and, well, the view I get is of a Mini. Maybe this should be a British Class 50 because you're more likely to see a British Class 50 <laughs> with Mini. Anyway, let's go and have a look at that Mini because it's not your average Mini. Certainly not sort of Mini you'd normally see. Have a look at that as a diesel motor and generator 
Oh yeah, um, before you have a look at the menu, what you can do, I'm not going to do it, but if you want, you can put a euro or two fifty cents in and it will turn. There's lots of things like that, so if I was to do that every time I saw one of these, it probably costs quite a lot of money. Sometimes you see other people doing it, so I sort of stand and watch from a distance. Um, anyway, look at this, it's a mini with an upstairs and double decker bus, which is a mini, or an open top bus rather, that's a mini. Something a bit different. Here we have bubble car. We saw some of those in the other technical museum it's in. So I'm going to go up these steps, get a nice view over the museum. And there's the upstairs seats of, of that. I did want to think of my larder putting seats on the roof rack, making that into an open top bus, but if someone's done it with a mini, you know, maybe I should. Anyway, so there's a nice view over the museum. There's lots of fairground organs. Yeah. Come up to here. Get a rather different view of the steam loco from above and we've come to the where all the model railways are there's some nice cabinets with various models inside and there's some models of some steam engines so you can see how you know different types of steam engines there's another one there i don't think these actually well, they, they might work but there isn't the option to make them work there's one there that's quite interesting paddle steam so you can see how the cylinders turn the wheels. Now, there's some model railways here. Some quite cool looking LGB model railways. What I'll do, I will spend money, um, but rather than me do it now, I'll do it later and put it in another video. And then what I'll do, I'll make one video which will have the model railway here and also the one at Sintime, because there was also a G scale LGB layout there. So that, there's one video of all of that. There's various exhibits. So there's a VR hat down there, the VR double logos, all sorts of, see, nameplates of locos, different hats from different railway companies. Oh, that logo, that belongs to the hearts of, of seven, or no, nine, nine, two, two, two. And I've ridden behind that one. It's like the pioneer of the, of the huge two, 10, two steam locos I have on the heart. So I've had that one for haulage. What else have we got? Um, yeah, DB hats there. Um, there is a, that's a Romanian Railways hat. I think some of Yugoslav, some of Yugoslavian Amtrak's obviously American. Have a look here. There's another rather large G scale out. Again, I'm going to put money in. I'll make that as a separate video. Oh, and as for that outside, that turbine we saw, which I said came from a nuclear power station. I said Fitzberg. Here's a model of that nuclear power station. So you can see the dome. I always like nuclear power stations when they have a dome. It always makes them a bit more, I don't know, just cool. I really like nuclear power stations. Germany's phasing them out. Phipsburg's already closed. You can actually see inside. So you can see the reactors. And then there is the cooling towers. The cooling towers at Phipsburg were demolished. The power station stopped generating in 2019. The cooling towers were demolished in 2020. At the time of filming, there's still three nuclear power stations generating in Germany. Unfortunately, they're going to close them down. Um, which, yeah, I think it's a shame because I think nuclear power stations are fantastic things. And also, I'm not going to go on to get into environmental and all that, but basically, if you're not going to generate with coal, basically, you need to use nuclear. Anyway, here's a huge model railway, G scale model railway. Going to need more euros. And up here, some more exhibits. Oh, look, MAV. So that's Magyar Alam Voschutok, that's Hungarian State Railways, class 411227. So uh, I've seen them, um, was it a 411 I saw in Stig No, it was a class 424 I saw on the main line Hungary earlier this year. Various other exhibits. We'll go around here. Oh look, that, that's a Yugoslavian plate, I think. So lots of different exhibits. There's a class 101. I've had a few of those for haulage. There's a French steam loco there. So there's lots of exciting things to see. And there's the model railway on this side. So uh, well, like I said, I'm going to put my money in and we'll watch them go around. So that'll be quite fun, quite nice layouts. This one's even got, as you can see, a rack and pinion railway making its way up the mountain. What we're going to do now, and we walk back past the nuclear power station again, and have a look across the museum, the hall, it's huge. There's just simply so much. You can go upstairs, there's more exhibits upstairs. I'm not going to show them because like I said, I simply cannot show you everything. Um, if you want to see everything else, really, you've got to come here. But I'll, I'll show you, you know, give you a taste 
of what there is at this museum because there really is such a, a great variety of different things to see. And we come down here, more cars, steam locomotives. I really like that bus, that Renault bus, that's quite cool. Also, it gives the appearance there's hardly anyone here. Again, it's because, like I did with Sinsheim, I've chosen to come here on a weekday in November. If I was to come here at a different time of year, I think it'd be much, much busier, and making videos like this simply wouldn't be possible. There's lots of places I've been to where I'd like to make videos, but they're just so busy, it just simply isn't always possible. But here, it's perfect for me. There's probably a good couple of hundred visitors in the museum. There are people about, but it just feels like I've got it to myself because the museum's so vast, everyone just disperses. it. Anyway, look at that, it's a funicular car there. So it's from a funicular rail which was unfortunately closed. If we have a look though, one thing you can do here, which you can't normally do, is you can actually see underneath and see all the workings of a funicular railway carriage. So that's something you wouldn't normally see. Here we have levers from a German signal box. Now here, look, this is a class 95007. These are locos built to work their tank engines. They're a bit like what you get at the Hearts, but these are standard gauge, they're not meter gauge, and they're blooming massive. They're probably some of the biggest tank engines I've ever seen. I'm looking there. There was one running a few years ago in, to confuse you, in, if you don't know about rows, in the area of the Hearts, but on a standard gauge railway, not part of the Hearts meter gauge systems. So it's yeah, I, I wish I'd gone really and had a trip behind that. Maybe I will one day. It's great to see. And there's a class 03. I think I've had an 03 for haulage. I've had a few different German steam locos, sometimes at Dresden Steam Festival and other mainline tours. The reason the wheels are behind this is because, again, you can put a euro in, make the wheels turn. Um, we did see that happening at the other museum at Sinsheim. On this side, there's a load of fire engines which is quite interesting to see. There's a lot of things here which I wouldn't say I'm overly interested in, but they're interesting to see. So things like fire engines, I don't really have a particular interest in fire engines, but you know, it's, it's nice to see them. Let's just go and have a, a wander into the middle of the museum here and have a closer look at all of these fire engines. Look, so you've got like a whole line up there of different fire engines. There's just so much though, and there's, there's like a fire station there which is quite interesting. We'll go over here now. There's another that's steam loco there. That's a class 55. Yeah, it's not a Deltic, as in that sort of class 55. It seems to be I kind of have the, the British class numbers in my head. So when I see 55 I think of Deltic, but yeah, it's not a Deltic. Um, it's but it is a class 55. And it's an OAO, so it's probably the closest thing you get in Britain to it would be something like a Super D. Now here we have a crocodile. We saw one of these, it's so big it's hard to show you. We saw something a bit like this in the museum at Sintime. Someone's just put money in one of the things, you can just hear some music coming on. See that carousel? You can put Euro and see that go around, you actually get to ride it. There's a few cars here now. I have to say, cars like Mercedes and BMWs, they're not my cup of tea. But that is a really nice Mercedes. Citroen in the middle. That's a BMW. They're the kind of Mercedes and BMWs I like. I like to stick with my larder for everyday driving. There's our fire engines. I'm gonna go down here now. There's, um, well actually from here, well, we've got two things. We've got a huge class 01. I said at the beginning a bit, slightly streamlined looking. It's not streamlined as the one we saw at Sinsheim. You get a better view of the Crocodile electric locomotive. So they're pretty big. So this is a Pacific, this Class 01, so think of Pacifics. For those of you to kind of give you an idea, if you're not too sure, Pacific is a two and then, no, sorry, a four and then a six and a two. In France, they call it a two, three, one. And Oliver Bullet, with his Bullet Pacific, he likes that system. So like Clanline is a Bullet Pacific and, um, so, yeah, Clanline's a Pacific. Flying Scotsman's a Pacific, although not a Bullet Pacific, it's a Gresley Pacific, as are the A4s. Anyway, enough of uh, British trains, British locomotives. We're in Germany, so it's very much about German steam locomotives. You can go on the footplate of this one too. So yeah, this is like one of the, you know, the big top link crack express steam locos of Germany. And we're just camped there. What we're gonna do now, we're gonna go 
well actually we're going to look at a couple of things in the middle then we're going to go outside because there's a lot of different things outside and there really is a huge variety of things except there's no trap rooms here I wanted just to show you this vehicle here it's got tyres so it must go on the road but it's got buffers and it's got a coupling so is it a road vehicle or is it a railway vehicle the answer is it's both it can be changed to um, wheels with flanges so it could run on a railway so if that's something you're charge I did also wonder could it potentially tow something like a tram okay maybe that's closer to getting to a tram could it pull a tram along on a railway line say that's laid in the concrete like say you get a docks maybe I don't know anyway we're going to go outside this really is a really nice building as well as I said it's a historic building it's not a modern building there's another organ up there we're going to go outside and we're going to see all sorts of different things transport for well I suppose um, trains planes and automobiles come out here I said about a railway line look, like that so that vehicle potentially could tow something along here and there's aeroplanes above us and we come out here Ooh, there's a, a steamroller covered up our first steam loco we see outside is this little locomotive here I wonder what the funnel is that's a spark arrester so that would arrest any sparks it's a field barn loco it had been used in the war probably on the western well that's in france basically and in germany but they're quite quite nice little locos there is one at leighton buzzard railway it's not steaming various other engines down there rollers aeroplanes above us you get a good view of what the building's like here we're going to go yeah and there's boats as well there's some interesting boats there's this one here which is carved out of the tree i know there's some locos in the background we're going to get onto them there's something though quite unexpected round the corner something you probably wouldn't expect to see in germany there's this steam engine here that is a chinese qj locomotive i think qj stands for kinjin which means progress probably about the only chinese i'll ever learn it's becomes the third Chinese locomotive I've seen. There's a British built one in the National Museum in York, and the Churnit Valley Railway has an S160. So that's an American loco, but one of their S160s worked in China. So I have actually tra traveled behind a former Chinese railway's locomotive. But this is the QJ. So this was built, um, if you look up there, that there is its works plate. So obviously I can't read the Chinese writing, but I can see 1978. So it's quite modern, you know, compared to, you know, some of our steam loco as well. Our last steam loco for mainline service before Tornado was Evening Star. That was built in March 1960 at Swindon. China built their last mainline steam locomotive in 1998. They built these up until 1988. So for another 10 years, China built steam locos. And these were still at work a few years ago. I think there is a little bit of working steam in China, but not a lot. I always wanted to go there when I could, when I could have seen them, but I was a little bit young didn't really have the money so I never got to go there I did go to Bosnia though so I have witnessed real working steam that was with Kriegslox we'll get onto them in a minute here we have another German diesel a class 220 or well, I say another it's the first German diesel we've seen it's the one we could see from outside which come round the fence so when we say class 220 if you think of what a British class 220 is it's a Voyager probably the most unpopular train ever you could arguably say their German is equivalent to a class 47 and Voyager's replaced a lot of the work class 47s do but again it's a bit I'm going off on a bit of a tangent of British and um, locos and German locos but I'd love to have had a trip behind one of these there probably are some going at heritage lines and for mainline tours so yeah that's class 220 and here we have a much smaller locomotive built in 1954 I only know that because I read that there so as for the track they're on sort of is like a little bit of museum railway it goes out there we saw it crossing the road I, I'm not going to do it but if I was to follow it I would probably come I would come to the German railway network it runs right through sort of the back of the town so all of this I'm assuming these arrived by rail I'm not 100% sure but they probably could have arrived by rail here we have some American tank wagons they were built in the war came over to Europe there's another one that's what I understand anyway I'm going to walk around past the Chinese QJ. It's interesting it has the Chinese number and our standard number. So I didn't I didn't write down the Chinese style numbers. I just wrote the 2655 down. It's on a plinth. 
I think I'm fairly sure they're standard gauge, but the loading gauge, it probably Germany has obviously a bigger loading gauge than Great Britain, so that's the size of how big the tunnels are. You simply could not run any of those steam locos we saw inside, the German ones, if you tried to run them in Britain. You might just get away with it on the Great Central because that was built to a European loading gauge. But most railways, it simply would not fit under the bridges or tunnels. I think if this was to run on German railways, it wouldn't fit under the bridges or tunnels. It's an even bigger loading gauge. Now, there's, uh, there's a crane there. That funny looking loco, that is a steam loco. It's a fireless loco, so it's charged up with steam. And then it runs all day once it's had the steam put inside it. There's another little diesel loco. And then here, this little shunter, that's an electric loco. You can just see on top the pantograph, which is folded down. It's a rather incongruous sight looking ahead, you know, along a railway line with aeroplanes sort of hovering above you that aren't actually going anywhere. It's a really, really um, weird but exciting place. And I do really like it here. I do think, you know, you should definitely come here. If you're into this kind of thing, if you're into transport, then this museum and the one at Sintheim are well worth a visit. Now, we come along here, there's another class 220. You can have a look in the aeroplanes. I don't think I'll do that on this video. Well, I, I say that, I don't go worry about these two because there's a lot to see. Look at that. If this was a still picture, you'd think, well, why is that Boeing 747 flying so low? As you can see, it's actually just there. We're definitely going to go in that. We can't not go in that. Here's another class 220 in a different DB livery. There's a narrow gauge bit of track there. There's a loco. The easiest way to show you that loco is if I just take you around the end here. We're, we're right at the corner of the museum where most visitors don't bother going to. It's just like, ah, eh, trains, not interested. Or let's take a picture of the steam engines. Um, so we walk right round the end of the track, past the buffer stops, and we see quite an unusual loco. You can see how much smaller it is being narrow gauge to the standard gauge loco. It's an electric loco. I understand it would have worked in a mining sort of situation and it's got a couple of works plates so i think it was originally built by henshaw in 1948 but it's also got a siemens plate and it says built in 1950 so i'm a bit confused there so i'm not too sure which which it is but it's, it's quite big it's as long as the class 220 behind it but obviously it's a lot shorter and it had two pantographs it pulled wagons like this so i'm not entirely sure what it worked but it's definitely some form of industrial railway so there's some aeroplanes ahead we're going to have a look at a few more locomotives and then we're going to make our way over to see the Boeing 747. It's very foggy, it's still very foggy today. Um, the fog hasn't cleared up, it's getting on for four o'clock in the afternoon and it's foggy. Anyway, so we've got a couple of little locos here, which look like they have a Boeing 747 on top of them. This funny thing here, this is another crocodile. This is an Italian railways crocodile which has ended up here, so that's quite interesting to see. So I can tick that off in my my Italian stock. Here we have a Kriegslok. These are the sort of locos I've seen working in Bosnia. Well this one, as you can see, it's got the red star on the front. I understand it to be a Ukrainian number plate it carries. However, Ukraine is five foot gauge, so have they regaged it? I don't know. I can't, it doesn't appear they have, but if you do know, then do comment and tell me. I saw one with that numbering system in um, Lithuania at Vilnius Rail Museum. If you want to see that, have a look at the link on the screen now. So that one must have been five foot. Another fireless loco. I'm going, I don't think I'm supposed to go this way. I'm just going to walk, jump off the end. Two more fireless locos, and of course, the Boeing 747. So I'm jumping off the end of the platform. And uh, so you can see they have the cylinder at the back of the loco. There are some of these that work apparently in parts of Germany, so you know if you look out for them, rumoured to be some Mannheim power station not too far from here. There's two of them. I've seen one at work at Ljubljana power station, only seen it from a passing train, but nonetheless that was a bit of working steam I witnessed. Now we're heading this way towards the Boeing 747. So we're going to have a look at that. We're also going to look inside the building behind it because there's a few things that may interest some of you. Oh and there's a little diesel shunter, there's a huge dumper truck. If I go and stand right next to it you'll give you an idea just how big it is. It's massive but not as massive as the Boeing 747. So 
what I'm going to do now, we're going to go and have a look around inside that. Or no, first, I'll tell you what, let's go in the building behind it and then we'll go and see the 747. So, with the main part of the museum behind us, we're going to go into this much more modern museum now, Apollo and beyond. So, this is very much the space age part of the museum. I'm not too interested in this part of the museum, so what I'll do, I'll show you so you get the gist of it, but um, I simply don't know enough about everything to really tell you much about it but we'll, I'll show it to you have a look at that that is a spacecraft the space shuttle so it's really impressive to see that it's like an aeroplane but the wrong shape it's a bit weird but nonetheless it's it's interesting it's amazing to think man can do all this kind of thing but it just doesn't really interest me so much there's a lot of racing cars there I do like seeing a Fiat 131 that's a pretty cool spot what we'll do though, we'll go up, there's a lift over here, so if we go up high, a bit like we did at Sin Time in Hall 3, and then we can have a look at the hall from above, but I just don't feel I'm the person to show you around this one, because I just don't know enough about it, so I'm going to call this lift, and hopefully it'll come down, there we go, there goes the counterweight. While the lift comes down, just have a look at the shuttle because you, while you're here, might as well see it. And now the lift is coming down. We're going to go up. So in this hall, all around the top of various exhibits on spacecraft, there's also lots of motorbikes. Again, a subject that isn't really my my um, subject, I suppose. My, I don't have the knowledge about it. Um, but you know, it, 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 the point is here, there's a lot to see. So it doesn't really matter what your interest is. If you like forms of transport, it's probably got it here, apart from a tram. Anyway, look at that. So, yeah, it's no doubt very impressive. Oh, and here's various bits of sci-fi films. Um, I'm not that into sci-fi films either, you know. Um, but they can be quite entertaining. I, I, too, I do really like um, the film Event Horizon. That's a brilliant film. It's known as The Shining in Space. There's fictional spacecrafts there. I don't think I can see anything to do with Event Horizon, but that's the one space film I quite like. Anyway, we come to here, and there's a rather weird model railway. A very model railway in some sort of fantasy land. So what I'll do again, I'll pay with one of my euros, and uh, we can perhaps, we'll see the trains going around, and that'll be in a different video. What I'm going to do now, though, we're going to go out onto the roof. There's no concords on the roof of this museum, but we're going to go out onto the roof, and what we'll do, we'll get a great view of the site, I'll point out a few more things from there, and then we'll finish with a look inside the Boeing 747. Anyway, have another look at the spacecraft. By the way, there is stairs that take you up to it. You don't really go inside. You just sort of have a look. It's not like you actually get to go inside and walk around. But yeah, it's, it's impressive, interesting, just not my subject. Right, so we go through here, look, there's, it's quite interesting, you see all the uniforms and there's lots of things about space suits and everything. So, if you're someone who likes, you know, um, right, so here, yeah, I couldn't remember what it's there for. So if, you, if you're into space, you know, do definitely come here, because you won't be disappointed. Another thing I think is really good about the museum is, it's open till six o'clock, and so is the one at Sinsheim. I remember I went to a museum in Britain once, and it closed at half past three, and I got there at about quarter to three. It wasn't this big, but I really had to rush my visit, because um, I've travelled up from London on a train. I won't say where, but at least it's open to a sensible time. Because it's like this morning I could have a little look around Speyer city centre and not feel I had to rush. So, go out here. When I was up here earlier, it was less foggy. I could see Speyer Cathedral, which was over there somewhere. We need to get over there now to go inside the Lufthansa Boeing 747, but from here, you get a great view of the site. There's an Antonov there. 
that's a big transporter plane, there's a submarine, there's a couple of boats. There's a restaurant down there, I might go and have a beer when I finish this video. So yeah, next we're going over there and we're going to go into the Boeing 747. A moment ago we were over there, now we are underneath the Boeing 747. There's the nose, see the fuselage, look at that, there's the wings and the wheels. You can see just how big it is, we're up pretty high as it is, as this bit here it's a little bit scary because you walk along and it's like you're walking above ground and it feels a bit scary but you know it's all part of the fun. Get a good view out there of the main building and disappearing into the fog the cathedral's completely disappeared but it's over there you can see various other airplanes fire the steam locos and just see the class 220 in the background anyway let's go and have a look inside a boeing 747 because it's really something very exciting and uh, what we're going to do see that thing there it doesn't look like much slide down to the ground got my mat ready so I'm going to have to carry that around with me but we're going to finish with a slide down to ground level so we're going to go up the spiral staircase it's a bit like we did at Sin Time where we went into a Concorde this time we're going to a Boeing 747 and another little Lufthansa Viscount plane down there you can also go in that one um, but I'm just feeling if I show you inside every airplane the video is going to be very very long and um, it will take forever. So we're just almost at the top now. Thank you. Here we are. And if you're looking forward, it really feels like we could be, you know, a few thousand feet up, as soon as we already are in the clouds. So we go inside, and obviously immediately see how big it is. But this is interesting. If we walk through to here, you can see the what fuselage is actually like without all of the um, cladding. So you get quite a good view of the whole workings of the fuselage. What we can actually do, we can go down here um, into the hold. I'm just going to throw that down there, it's the easiest way. I need three hands otherwise. So we're going down here, if you look forward you can see the whole aeroplane. See the seats there. So we're now in the hold. I've always wondered what happens to my luggage on an aeroplane. Well it obviously goes somewhere like this into the hold. So this is the hold of an aeroplane. Really quite an amazing space. Also feels weird to think we are, okay we're not thousands of feet up but we are in the sky and it's, if you're wondering why those ladders look like they're like that, it's because the aeroplane's at an angle. So those ladders are actually vertical and straight. It's the camera giving the illusion that they're not. So if we go up here, just about climb up here with a camera. Um, and get a bit. So what I'm going to do, rest the camera there. It's probably the best way to climb up. Pick up the camera and uh, we continue our adventure around this aeroplane. So if you look forward here, see some of the passengers and the staff, cabin crew. Yeah, hostesses. These are the toilets in the middle, can't really see them. So we can find when we get a better view. It's got up here now, going up towards the cockpit. So you can see. So there would be another row of seats here. You can see in there the middle seats. If I went on one now, I'd really want a window seat. I'd be a bit disappointed if I got a middle seat. So we go around here, it's where they probably serve from. And I'll look down, see the cabin crew. Walking up to the front now of the aircraft, and what else are we going to find? I think this is now the business class which we're in, or no, maybe first class or business class, one or the other. We're now going to go up the place I always wanted to go up, up the spiral staircase to have a look. Yeah, so it says business class, first class up here. So again, it's awkward walking up with a camera. So we're now coming up to first class. So from what I can see, this looks more, yeah, much more posher than the business class. Look at them sitting there, enjoying the flight in really nice, comfortable seats. So this is what it's like. And like I said, it kind of feels like we are up in the sky because it's so foggy outside. It's like we could be up in the clouds, but we are just at the level we're at. We go through here and um, we will, in a second, 
be able to have a look at the cockpit. So here is the cockpit. So we're now in the cockpit of a Boeing 747. That's really quite exciting. What we're going to do now, we're going to go down. I'm going to show you something from the outside. So we're back down at the top of that spiral staircase. It feels really weird walking down. That's why I paused it because it's, you know, on a slant. Anyway, uh, that's the toilet. Like sitting there in paper. We're walking through. Again, I expect there would be more seats here, but there currently isn't. So we're back into the main area of the fuselage. We're going to do something now, even more unusual, something you wouldn't expect to be able to do. We're going outside, as you can see, and we're going to do some wing walking. I've always wanted to wing walk on an aeroplane. Well, here we are. I'm, I'm now on the wing of a Boeing 747. And, um, yeah, to keep saying, by the fog. Like that, yeah, we could be, like, really, really high up. Well, I'll probably be blown away like this, but, you know, this is so exciting. And through the cage, you can just see the uh, um, diesel loco, the Class 220. See various other airplanes, of course, you can see the main hall down there. So it's just such a fantastic museum. Um, you know, basically, you just come and visit both of them, this one and um, the one that's inside. T together, they form a great day out. Don't try and do both of them on one day, because I've been at both of them all day there. And that's how big they are. So we're now walking back up the wing. Um, yeah, very exciting to be on, a, on the wing of an aeroplane. It's just, yeah, something I didn't think I'd ever get to do. Anyway, and there, there's the front. You can just see up there the business class, which was upstairs. That was really exciting. Now we're going to go back into the aeroplane. We're going to go back down that spiral staircase, and um, we're going to go down that slide. Can you see? Again, it looks like they're not straight, but it's because the aeroplane is on an angle, as if it's flying, as if it's taking off, and you know how they turn. So we're going to make our way down the spiral staircase now. You can see where we were. We were over there on the roof not that long ago. So we're going to make our way down the stairs and then um, we'll be able to go down the slide. So there above me are the wheels of the Boeing 747. That's the spiral staircase which we used to get up. I'm sat here now at the top of this slide. So we've been up high in the fog. There's the wing there of the Boeing 747. But now it's time to go down the slide back back down to the ground here we go well that was fun that was i think that was steeper than the slide at sin time but yeah that was really good fun really puffed out now after running up and down those stairs doing that anyway good fun it's a it's a great museum as i said i can't possibly show you everything there's just simply too much here to show you put my mat back there's so much here to see and like you really need a day here so i hope you enjoyed this video thank you very much for watching me please do feel free to like subscribe and comment and from the technic museum at spire goodbye